Hey there, my name is Jason. I'm a registered polysomnographic technologist for Sleep Tech, and I wanted to talk a little bit about surgeries for sleep apnea, treatment of sleep apnea, and mostly focusing on effective treatment or effective surgeries for the treatment of sleep apnea. Um, right here, you can see uh, the person on the left. This is a normal airway. Uh, it's nice and open. Uh, everything's good. Um, right over here, we have a crowded airway. Um, and if you notice the chin here, you'd call this a strong chin or it's out. Whereas this is a weak chin, this is rec retronathia, and uh, it's basically it's crowding the airway. So that's typically the main mechanism of sleep apnea, and um, that would cause the, you know just the throat size, the esophagus to be too small, it would cause the tongue soft palate to sag back in the airway, as well as a uvula. So if we draw, I'm gonna try to draw a person here. There's the nose. Then we have the airway. And there is a soft palate. And then we have um, the jaw down here. This is the tongue. And so this area in here is all airspace, so nasal cavity, oral cavity. And if there is an obstruction, it's usually, you know, going to be somewhere up in the upper airway, meaning again, uvula, soft palate, tongue, small airway. So one surgical treatment that is highly effective, but not many people want to do is a tracheotomy. And so you're going to put a hole here in the neck, goes into here. And so you're breathing in and out of uh, your throat, essentially. Um, this is pretty extreme. However, it is extremely effective in treating sleep apnea. If you have absolutely no desire to wear CPAP, um, it's effective. <laughs> it's effective. Uh, however, it's not really realistic for a lot of people because again, uh, for cosmetic reasons, you don't want to have a hole in your throat. So this leads us to another surgery that is effective uh, called the maxillomandibular advancement. All right. So with the maxillomandibular advancement, you have your lower jawbone here. This is a mandible. I have teeth, and the lower jawbone comes up. Then right up here, you have. Um, let's see. So the eye is going to be about right here. Um, you have bone that comes down through here, and teeth, and this basically the rest of the skulls here, but it's unimportant. Um, so with this surgery, what we do is we cut, or I'm sorry, don't cut. You break the bone here. We'll do this so it's like you bust it. And then you're gonna break the bone right here. Boom, 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 boom. And then so this part here is gonna get pushed forward and then this part right here is also going to get pushed forward. So if you remember the picture from before, we have that airway that's tiny. What all this pulling forward does is it's going to open all of this up so that instead of being small like that, it'll be expanded like that. And so the tongue that may have been sliding back, the uvula that may have been getting in the way, um, is all of a sudden going to be opened up and you'll be able to breathe without having your uvula, your tongue, your soft palate, or your um, airway be crowded. Here's a really cool picture of that. So this person, same person on the left, you can see right in here, their airway is extremely crowded. This is before they had the maxillomandibular advancement surgery. All this is really small. Over here, you can see that all of a sudden they don't have the same retronathia that they had before. You can see their chin is kind of weak here out here you can see how much more pronounced it is compared to if you like just follow along uh this the uh, forehead up here if you draw a straight line down versus here you can see how much more advanced it is and so now you can see that the airway is really opened up like right here you can see the hyoid how even the hyoid is kind of encroaching on the airway now the hyoid, hyoid is being pulled forward as well um, everything's being pulled forward 
So this is in a, uh, one of the more successful or yeah, one of the more successful surgeries that is done. Um, it even uh, actually changes your anatomical features of your face. So you can see this gentleman right here, he, he has, a little, you can see his chin is weak, whereas right here, his chin is being pulled forward. Here's another lady, you can see she has kind of a weak chin here, whereas here it's being pulled forward. Okay, so one final surgery I'd like to talk about, actually two more. So then there's also, if you're using CPAP, there's some people that, uh, if they have a deviated septum, having that repaired can make CPAP easier. It just gives you more uh, more space for the air to go in. Uh, sometimes people will feel like they have a lot of pain with CPAP um, because they have a deviated septum. Uh, if you have that repaired, it will make it easier and you'll have uh, a much better go at making CPAP successful. Okay, so the final surgery I wanted to talk about is the uvulopalentopharyngeoplasty. Um, typically, people just call this the U-P-P-P or U-triple-P. And so what this is, is, uh, let's see, if we draw, this is a person with their mouth wide open. And so you'd see, you know, their teeth are up here. Um, and right here you have the uvula. And then down here we have the tongue. Um, so if the U triple P, what we're doing, or what is done, is all this right here is actually cut out and then it is sewn together with the, the skin that's behind it. And so what you would get, uh, if we do another mouth here, again with some teeth, is you would see that line where the cut, the incision was made. And all this here is gonna be stitched up. And then, so that's the top of the airway, and then you're gonna have your tongue right here below it. Um, really not a pretty surgery. A lot of times my, my caution to you would be, uh, what this does is it usually gets rid of snoring, uh, but it does not get rid of the apnea. Um, one of the things they use as far as, um, defining this as being successful is if it decreases the apnea hypopnea index by half, then it would be considered successful. Um, so if you had an AHI of 30 and you dropped your... AHI in half after the surgery, which is a very painful surgery, you would have an AHI of 15. Well, that's still uh, in the diagnosable range well within it. Uh, you'd be still waking up 15 times per hour just with apneas and hypopneas. So to me, that doesn't sound successful. And it also doesn't take into account RERAs or respiratory effort related arousals, which would apply to your respiratory disturbance index or your RDI, which is more of a true measure of your sleep quality. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, a lot of times people will notice that their snoring is gone, but when they come back into the lab, their apnea is still just as bad. And so really it was a waste of time. It was extremely painful. And, um, so far I would say probably 95% of the people, if not more that have had this, um, don't feel any more rested and, um, their sleep study post, I have I've actually yet to see one that has been successful in terms of apnea. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and do that right here on YouTube. Or you can join my forum, which is freecpapadvice.com forward slash forum. And uh, that's it. Thanks.